Hi, Earth Signs. Welcome to your weekly messages for August 2nd through the 8th. August already. Whoa. <laughs> so, here we are. Hello, Earth Signs. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Hello, welcome. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Happy to have you here. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you are returning, hi, welcome back. Happy to have you. All of my information is in the description box below, so feel free to follow me on social media, check out my website, or um, email me if you would like to book your own personal reading. This is general, so take what resonates, leave what doesn't, and um, gender is always neutral, so if I say he or she, it's just the depiction on the card or the energy that I'm picking up. Um, feel free to reverse roles, so if I say you and it's them, and if I say them and it's you, feel free. If it's your storyline, don't try to pigeonhole yourself into a reading um, just because it says earth signs. So um, if it's not your storyline, that's okay. Check out your other placements. So if this is your sun sign, check out your moon rising or Venus and or Venus. And I encourage that for everybody because sometimes it just resonates more or it gives additional pieces to the puzzle. So we got some stuff going on this week. Um, starting with the full moon on the 3rd. So um, get ready to release. That's what full moons are all about, releasing. And this one is in the sign of Aquarius. So Aquarians are fantastic at, um, they're very community oriented. So how does whatever's going on affect the community? Um, they're not interested in small talk. They wanna dive deeper. It's funny because Aquarius is actually an air sign. But because they're the water bearer, a lot of people think that they are on a water sign. So they're really good at um, balancing the duality of individualism while still being a part of the whole. <laughs> so um, I talk more about it in the general reading, but um, I think that's why they're so in interested in deep conversations. So water signs go deep. Not at all. I'm a Pisces sun sign. We are not at all afraid of getting down into the emotions, swimming the depths in that way. Um, and then I think that's symbolized with the water bearer energy. And then they're an air sign. So they're actually very intellectual. They're conversationalists. They want to know what makes people tick. Why do people do or say the things that they do or say? And then uh, we've got the Lion's Gate on the 8th. So the Lion's Gate on 8-8. Eight, eight. It is um, a portal that opens up every year. So this is when the Earth and Star Sirius align. And I'm going to nerd out on you for just a minute. But I go into more depth in the general reading. But um, overview. So Star Sirius is the brightest star in our sky. And it's exponentially brighter than our sun, something like 26 times brighter than the sun. So um, some people also call it our spiritual sun. So it's when the earth and star Sirius align. So we're kind of like between two worlds, the physical and the spiritual. And it's um, this influx, the closer that we get to the portal, we get more and more and more um, expansive energy, all of this cosmic energy coming in and the nice thing is you don't have to do anything <laughs> you just get to be open to receive and um like our dna will change and we're getting light codes activation codes um ascension codes awakening so it's a great time for spiritual awakening and spiritual growth and um taking advantage of that energy it's pretty cool it's also when orion's belt um Alliance with the Pyramids at Giza. Super cool. Super cool stuff. So we get some ancient Egyptian influence in there too. So fun fact, I wanted to be an archaeologist in Egypt when I was little. And then I figured out that you have to get dirty and sweaty and, and it's just, that does not appeal to me. <laughs> 
So I skipped it and I decided um, when I was in college that history would be one of my minors. So I, I do have a minor in history, but um, anytime that there is a documentary about Egypt or an Egyptologist is speaking, I listen. Museum art exhibit with Egypt. It's very cool. <laughs> so there you go. Woo, all right. And then um, we have four planets and an outlier that are in retrograde this month. So Uranus, which is all about our independence. Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius, and that is about spiritual growth. Jupiter is very expansive energy. And then Saturn, which rules Capricorn, that is all about karma. And I try to keep things PG-13 on the channel, but sometimes words fly. So if you are in mixed company earbuds, <laughs> Um, but karma is only a bitch if you are, right? So if we reap what we sow, that's what karma is. Karma is balancing. So if you sow wildflowers, you're going to reap wildflowers. If you sow prickly, thorny weeds, you're going to reap prickly, thorny weeds. So, <laughs> um, Saturn being in retrograde is all about our karma, reviewing what we've done or what we haven't done, um, and balancing out that karma wheel. And then Pluto, that's our shadow self. And I think it goes retrograde later this month. So Pluto's coming into the mix, being retrograde. And that's an opportunity to let your demons come out and play. You pat them on the head, you, you give them some attention, and then you send them on their way. So um, time to do some shadow work. And then the, those are the four planets. And then our outlier Chiron, which he's been in retrograde for a little over a month now and will continue through mid-December, the December 15th-ish. And um, he's the wounded healer. So he's all about um, bringing some emotional wounds up to the surface for the opportunity to heal. It's not to punish you. It's the opportunity to heal. So, there we go. Just try not to ruminate too much um, on what you have or haven't done. The decisions that you've made um, that have led you to this point in life. All for the highest and greatest good. Okay. All right. So, Mystical Dreamer Tarot for the main spread. Clarifying with the Witch's Tarot. Then I've got some different or decks that we'll be using. They're all listed in the description box below. Ooh, Knight of Pentacles, hello. Beautiful energy right there. I'll lay them out and then I'll explain. Page of Wands. <laughs> the Hanged Man, Seven of Cups, Ace of Pentacles. So um, the Hanged Man and the Seven of Cups have been coming out quite a bit here. So Nine of Pentacles, this is beautiful. I call this the, the single lady or single male card, um, Miss Independent. Somebody who is um, very financially secure. They know what they're doing. They know what they want out of life. Look at those sunflowers. Steve, look at those sunflowers. Beautiful. So this is somebody who, um, in, in the energy of, I gotta move my Labrador, right? <laughs> the energy of um, just being, Self-sufficient, nice. Page of Wands, so Fire Signs, Aries, Leo, Satch. Somebody who's younger than you, quite a bit younger, could also be your child. In general, pages are messengers and they're fairly inexperienced because pages train to be knights, knights train to be kings and queens. Uh oh okay. Um, so the Page of Wands, that is all about, pages are messengers, wands are action, so it's a message that leads to action or about action. We'll see what comes out when we clarify. Hanged man right in the middle. Some see this as the sign of Pisces. But this is just taking a pausing and taking a look from another perspective. Maybe putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Um, or just taking a look from a different angle. And it's right here in the middle. And it's major arcana. <laughs> so um, it's a great time to just evaluate. See what's going on in life. What's working, what isn't. Um, if you're not yet in this Nine of Pentacles energy, how to get there. Might have some choices. Seven of Cups. Sometimes that can be overwhelming, but um, 
could also be about deception, but since it's upright, we'll see what comes out when I clarify. Since it's upright, it says to me choices. You've got some choices that you can make. And the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. So maybe you're not quite ready to plant the seed and take the action, but you're getting there. You're thinking about it. Let's see what comes out here. Which is tarot. Or maybe you, you just decide that that's not the seed you want to plant. Are we, we planting wild, uh, well, I said wild berries, so yeah, okay. Are we planting wild berries or are we planting thorns? What do you, what do you want to plant? What do you want to sow? Sorry guys, my screen keeps going dark here. What's up? All right, nine of pentacles. Let's clarify. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. Interesting combination. <laughs> So we start with the Seven of Swords, feeling shut out from society, somebody sneaking around, it's shadiness, the moon, secrets coming out, sign of Cancer or Pisces, she's the cover model for the deck, I love her, <laughs> she's, um, she, there's some secrets going on, some, something's, the sneaky, the Seven of Swords and the moon, something's not quite right. Something is not as it seems. Could be with a Pisces, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I'm sorry, Pisces, water sign. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Could be a Pisces, especially with the moon here. So this is somebody who is fairly balanced with their emotions. They're in check. Um, maybe wears their heart on their sleeve. And um, it shows emotion. So... Um, that could be you embodying the energy. It could be the other person. But with the moon and the seven of swords there, it makes me think that somebody um, might be emotionally manipulating you. So just be careful of that. But eventually the 10 of pentacles. So being there with the nine of pentacles, that's nice. This is emotional, or I'm sorry, financial stability. So the 10 of cups is the emotional fulfillment, nurturing kind of energy. This is the happy family that you have. The house, the dog, the little white picket fence, <laughs> you know, it's all, maybe it's just what it appears to be. But it could also be, that's what you're going for. You don't have time for that sneakiness. That came to light. And now it's time to be somebody who's um, very emotionally balanced to build that 10 of cups with. So the Knight of Swords, fastest knight in the deck. Um, Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Knights I see as people who are about the same age as you within five years-ish. And um, very fast moving energy. So the Page of Wands here with the Knight of Swords, whatever communication there is, it's you are very much taking very, very fast, um, moving very fast. The Page of Wands again. Page of Wands with the Page of Wands. So see where he's like, hey! <laughs> he's definitely um, yelling. This is coming in loud and clear and it's coming in fast. Five of Wands in reverse. You're not, you're not fighting it. You're like, okay, all right. Could also be internal conflict, but um, I'm really thinking that for you guys, this has to do with, um, you're not fighting it. You're not fighting that energy, you're just letting it be. Hanged man, taking a look from another perspective, a different angle. Oh, okay. Oh, well. So the nine of wands, yep, there's Chiron, wounded healer. This is the wounded warrior. Uh, last stand, could also be victim mentality. So maybe you were in victim mentality and you're trying to come out of it, or maybe taking a look from another angle, 
Um, this is like one more try, one more shot. Two of Wands making a choice and acting on it. Six of Wands feeling victorious. So you're happy. You're happy with whatever choice. You took the time out and then you made the choice and it paid off. Eight of Wands, fast communication. Nice. Seven of Cups, choices. All about choices. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm going to kind of read it in two parts here. Three of Cups celebration. Whatever choice you have, maybe you're happy that you have all these choices. You're like, yay, <laughs> great, I have a bunch of choices. Um, I'm not stuck in a box with just trying to make sense of one or two options. I have all these other options. And there's the Ten of Cups. So you got the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. Beautiful, you guys. So this is emotional fulfillment. Temperance, Sagittarius. Also balance, the balance between the physical and the spiritual worlds. Serious, Lionsgate. Six of Swords, you're moving on. And I love how in this depiction, he or she is rowing themselves. You're in control. You decide where to go. You're moving on. You're making your choice and, and you're moving with it. You're going with it. All right, so the emperor in reverse. Um, I see this as the sign of Aries, but it's all, the emperor is all of the kings combined. So when we put him on his head, he's a bit unbalanced. So he's all of the shadow aspects of those kings. Um, controlling and manipulative, bitey, um, keeps his emotions hidden, unbalanced, unstable, ungrounded. Yeah. And then the, oh, the hermit in reverse. So, hey, Virgo. In reverse, um, I see this as coming out of hermit mode. So you're kind of, you're coming out. You could be going into a dark night of the soul, conversely. You could be going into a dark night of the soul because of the unbalance. Or because things happen, now you're coming out of it. Take it how it resonates. The full brand new beginning. Leap of faith. You're taking a leap of faith. Okay, so now that makes sense. Um, so you were feeling unbalanced, and now you're you're coming out of that hanged man, that hermit energy. You took a look from another perspective. You you waited for a little bit. You went within, and now you're like, okay, now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to come out of hermit mode and start new. And this time you're balanced. You're balancing your resources. This is fair and even distribution of wealth, time, money, um, attention, whatever it is for you, whatever energy it is. You are now balanced. Nice. Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Ooh, Eight of Cups walking away. Emotionally, you're done and you're walking away from something. You might not be physically walking away, though I think you are with the Six of Swords. Um, it could be an emotional walking away, moving on. This is not the seed I want to plant. Not the seed I want to plant. Mm, okay. So we've got the tower in reverse, which I'm somebody who loves the tower, so that doesn't make me super thrilled, but <laughs> um, the tower in reverse. So that is maybe you avoided um, a major meltdown <laughs> by not planting that seed. You avoided a tower. There it is. You walked away. Ace of cups, brand new offer, emotional. Um, could be in a relationship, could be, uh, could be a romantic relationship, could be a friendship, could be with a family member, take it how it resonates. Um, but because you did not plant that seed and you avoided a tower moment, it ushered in a brand new start emotionally. Seven of Wands in reverse. Yeah. Healthy boundaries. You're not feeling defensive. You don't feel the need to be defensive. It's a wish come true. Sign of Aquarius with the star here wish come true. You manifested this. 
Page of Pentacles in reverse. So pages are younger than us. This is earth signs. So hello, earth signs. <laughs> and um, in general, this is just somebody who pages are fairly inexperienced. They don't really know what to do. It's kind of like this is a really big deal and I'm not sure. So put it in reverse and it's like, okay. All right, because of the experience you've had before, you knew that that was not the seed you wanted to plant. The Empress, beautiful, beautiful. She is all of the queens combined. So where the emperor is all of the kings, she is all of the king, uh, queens, sorry. The ultimate mother, wife, um, very nurturing, very caring. She is, as you can see, typically depicted as pregnant. So that could be actual fertility, could be um, an actual pregnancy, could be an adoption, could be just um, a new idea, creativity. We're gonna come back to that here in just a second. Yep, nine of, you're not losing any sleep. You're very peaceful and calm. So, because this one that's upright is all about anxiety and nightmares and insomnia, and this is more like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm sleeping peacefully, I am not stressing out. This is what you wanted, this is what you have manifested. This is something that's really good. So I want you guys to see something. This came out in the general reading too. The Emperor and the Empress. This is twin flame, divine soulmate, ultimate union, whatever you wanna call it. That's what this is. And see how the Empress, the divine feminine, is upright and the divine masculine is in reverse. And you can be the divine feminine and be male in this lifetime, in your meat suit, and you can be the divine masculine is a female in your meat suit. Doesn't matter. When these two come out, and it doesn't matter that one's reversed and one's not necessarily, but um, there, there's a message in here about twin flame, ultimate soulmate, whatever you want to call it. Here's what I'm interpreting. With the divine masculine in reverse and the divine feminine upright, divine feminine is healed. She's ready to go. She's like, all right, just kind of looking over like, let's go, let's heal, let's do this. <laughs> and he's like, eh, I'm not quite there yet. So he still needs to heal for some of this to happen. Take it how it resonates, but that's what I'm saying. All right, Energy Oracle by Sandra Ann Taylor. In the general reading, I think I incorrectly attributed Colette Baron Reed because I just finished Oracle Palooza. My bad, my sincerest apologies. It's right in the description. But my mouth, on the other hand, was not working. All right. Energy for the earth signs. Whoa, two things want to come out. Okay. Door to romance, number 33. So um, we don't reduce 33. It's one of the divine numbers. So there you go, my numerology nerds. Door to romance, it's opening. Who holds the key? And then number 23, all tied up. I think Pisces got this in the general reading. So two and three is five, that's changes. All tied up, this reminds me of the hanged man energy. Um, just kind of pausing taking some time to evaluate, to see what it is that you want, to manifest what you want. Maybe because it has to do with romance, maybe like that, I don't know. You do you. <laughs> do your thing. But I think in, in general, it just means, um, see how this one, has a heart in the cage. So maybe you feel like um, when it comes to romance, you have your heart in a cage, you're afraid to open up. You're keeping it under lock and key, you're keeping it all tied up um, because you're afraid to let go. But I don't see any bars in front of that heart. Open your heart, open it up, open up to romance if that is if this is the twin flame thing for you. You got the 10 of pentacles and the 10 of cups. So if um, 
if this is resonating as a romantic reading for you, do it. I think the universe is pretty much shoving you in that direction. Home. Beautiful. I think uh, Water Signs got this. Home. What or who feels like home to you? Beautiful. All right, guys. So those are your messages for the, oh, you know what? I'm gonna pull a monology because we have the full moon this week. It'd be great if somebody made like a star series deck. That would be fun. I don't know. I don't know if I have the creative juices for that, but it'd be fun. Where somebody probably once said, huh, Yasmin Bolin probably was like, huh, a moon deck. I don't know if I have the creative juices for that, but we'll see. <laughs> now it's one of our best-selling decks. You and your loved ones are safe. The new moon in Cancer. Yeah, you're safe. No matter what, you're safe. A fiery climax approaches, full moon in Aries. Beautiful. So something's coming. Something's coming. All right, guys. So hopefully something in there resonated for you, some nugget of wisdom. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to contact me if you would like your own personal reading. Take care.